What's up, everybody? Welcome back inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. You know what time it is. It's Friday. It's time for four downs. We're going to make this one pretty quick. Uh, got Toledo right before we get to the Big Ten slate next week against Wisconsin. But 7 o'clock in the horseshoe on Saturday night, Ohio State and Toledo. You can find that game on Fox if you can't find it. Uh, if you can't find a ticket, uh, easy for me to say. Matt, let's get started. Uh, bold prediction time. Ready, go. I've been thinking about this one all day. The last you know, a few weeks, I feel like I've been boom, boom, boom. And uh, we'll, we'll keep up with that theme. There's going to be a trick play by Toledo in this game. I don't think these bold predictions necessarily have to be about Ohio State, do they? Uh, not they... necessarily. In the spirit of the rule, you can pick whatever you want. I'm going to have some fun with uh, Mid-American Conference team here. Um, and I'm going to say Toledo is going to run a trick play of some sorts. Their offense is pretty dynamic, and they've shown that in the last two weeks, and they're going to need some way to get started somehow. So I'm going to go with the trick play. All right. Go ahead, Tim. So the floor is yours. Trickeration. I thought we made the bold picks at the end, but I guess we did it at the beginning. Uh, if Jackson Smith and Jigba plays, he will have six catches, roughly six to seven catches, for roughly 100 to 120 yards. Okay. Okay. So a hundred yard game for Jackson Smith and Jigba. Is there a, do you have a reasoning behind that or do you yeah, just Yeah, he's want... damn good. He might be the best receiver <laughs> in college football and All he's right. champing at the bit. Right. Uh, I think, you know, if they held him out for this game, it wouldn't bother, it would probably bother Jackson, but I, I think they'd get by without him because uh, those hamstrings are touchy subjects. You know, Tim, it's always hilarious to me when we kind of, as the media, especially here in the Woody Hayes Athletic Center during the weeks, make a mountain out of the molehill and this defense has given up five field goals and one touchdown uh through two games doesn't have a turnover though so that's the big storyline here in the woody hayes this week has been why don't you guys have any turnovers i think that's going to change it's always funny to me when when we ask those things and then all of a sudden they just happen poof david copperfield as, as our as our old pal anthony schlegel used to say uh, Ohio State will have three turnovers, will produce three turnovers in this game. I think they'll all three be interceptions. Uh, Daquan Finn is a dynamic quarterback, but he's not afraid to take risks. This defense is champing at the bit to get its hands on the football. Hasn't been done in two games now. I think Ohio State will nap three interceptions uh, in that game. Yeah, and turnovers are like crashes in auto racing. Once one happens, they kind of come in bunches. Yeah. So I can see what you're talking about there. And yeah. that's what everyone wants to see. And by the way, they did have that, they stopped. Uh, uh, they stopped Arkansas State on fourth and one at midfield. Uh, theoretically, it was a turnover on downs, but I don't know where that goes into the stats. Here I am in my 50th year or something covering college football. I still don't understand where that goes. Well, uh, that's not near as exciting as the interception. I don't know. That sack was – that sack, I just interrupted you. I'm sorry. <laughs> that sack was pretty damn spectacular. Uh, two dams for Tim on the board now. Let's go, Matt, offensive player of the game. I got I got no swear words here, <laughs> but, but – uh, I'm going to go with Travion Henderson as offensive player of the game. You're going to see, I feel like you're going to see Ohio State really try to establish that run game once again. This will be the, the last non conference test for Ohio State before they go up against a formidable Wisconsin team. Um, last opportunity, I guess, to showcase and kind of put together, establish more rhythm offensively on in the run game against, I don't want to say a less than opponent, but against a less than opponent. You know, uh, we don't practice, we don't rehearse this, obviously. Oh, very obviously. I was fired up to say Travion Henderson. Oh. I don't know what I was thinking not Go going ahead. first. That's okay. I think Travion Henderson is going to be the offensive player of the game. I think there are some things I've, I've watched in Toledo's defense uh, that will be available to Ohio State uh, in this offensive line, and I think it will get after it. And I could see him with a couple of, couple of three decent to big-time runs, maybe getting that 150 to 180 to 200 range. Definitely could see that happening Saturday. Okay, well, then I will go a little off script here, which there is no script again, like we keep saying. Um, I'm going to go with Dallin Hayden. You guys both give running backs. I'm going to give another running back. Um, there's not a lot of opportunities for freshmen to play in Big Ten play unless a couple different opponents here and there maybe. Um, this is one of the opportunities for Dallin Hayden to get the football. He's the third string running back, and he's going to need to play some sort of role in this offense at some point this year because you always need – and not just your second, but your third running back at times. You know, if Trayvon Henderson, you know, go ahead. Archie Griffin called that a pair and a spare. Go ahead. You know, you're, you're going to need that third running back at some point, um, whatever you want to call that third running back. 
And Dallin Hayden needs reps. And so I think Tony Alford, Ryan Day, Ohio State knows that. They, this, they're not strangers to that fact. So I think Dallin Hayden, you could see him having a pretty nice game. I don't know if he'll get in the end zone. That'd be nice for him. First career touchdown, you know, in the shoe at night. That'd be nice for him. But I don't know how it'll work. But I think he's going to be the offensive player of the game because I think Ohio State will try to establish this ground game and work their third string freshman in to get him those necessary reps so he's ready if he's called on. And I thought the few carries that he had last Saturday against Arkansas State, I mean, he had a reception or two. He, I mean, he looked really good. Yep. Oh, yeah. And true in, you know, his first action in a game. So, good pick. Now defensive player of the game, Matt, um, go. I'll go with Jack Sawyer. And he's been so good in things that don't necessarily jump off the stat sheet. You know, the things that you expect him to be good at, play recognition, you know, block protection if he has to do it, block shedding if he has to do that. Um, you know, everyone is, where's the sack? Where's the sack? Where's the sack? And he's, he's going to get his, you know, don't, don't worry about it. He's one of the best edge rushers in the country. Um, he's going to get his, he's going to get his this game. Uh, he's got two weeks of work behind him now. This is going to get home a couple of times against, you know, this Toledo offensive line. So I'll go with Jack Sawyer. It's so important for, uh, at the beginning, at least for Tommy Eichenberg and Steel Chambers, to have a pretty good game against this quarterback who who will scramble, probably scrambles to run more than he just runs, but to be alert in that intermediate area, uh, I could see one of those two becoming the defensive player of the game. And since uh, Tommy Eichenberg's already been the Nagurski National Defensive Player of the Game, uh, Player of the Week, I'm going to go with Steel Chambers just to be, you know, balanced. Tim, do you know yes. who Toledo's oh. center is? Uh, no, I do not. Do you know? Why are you at? Don't, don't put me on the spot like this. I'm interrupting you now. No, I do not know who Toledo's center is. Toledo's who is it? center is a converted defensive tackle well, along with, and he is among the five. Let me interrupt you. I'm held my hand Go up. Ahead. I know that there are things that can be had by Ohio State's defensive front against these guys. Absolutely. So I do know, I just don't know the name. The two uh, most veteran offensive linemen in this Toledo starting five were hurt out for the season, both during training camp. This is a, a young unit, one that I know people in Toledo are not really keen on being able to block Ohio State. Uh, there's one guy in particular in this building that's gaining a lot of buzz this week. I think Ohio State's gonna try to sprinkle him in quite often with whether that's the first team or the second team to get him those comfortable reps so he's ready to be part of that too deep come Big Ten time. Guys, Caden Curry is coming. And, you know, I, I, maybe I'm just picking true freshmen here just because it's the last non-conference game and I'm feeling a little frisky. But, <laughs> you know, Caden Curry is, is one of these guys who has that first step that you cannot teach. And, you know, against a, a you know, Jack Sawyer is obviously going to play really well. JT Tuimolo out. You just don't know how much those guys are truly going to play if they can have their way that much with Toledo. I think Caden Curry is going to get a lot of time in this game, and I think he's going to have a big impact in this game. Caden Curry is in a hurry. Go ahead. Again, that's a another guy against Arkansas State. Showcase what he can do and why he's at Ohio State. Absolutely. So, you know, there's a lot of guys, 85 of them, in fact, scholarship guys, show why they're at Ohio State. Uh, and they're going to probably score some points. Uh, Matt, you're going to give a score prediction now. I'm not meaning to put you on the spot, but I'm just going to put you on the spot. What's your score prediction for Saturday in the Horseshoe at 7 p.m.? Well, that's why I'm at Ohio State, is to you know give a score prediction on something I don't know a whole lot about. You're well, absolutely I, right. I'm going to go with uh, 46 to 17. I have a tough time figuring out how they're going to get 46, but I respect it. Go ahead, Tim. What's the last, what's the last spread I saw? Was it uh, uh, 31, 33, somewhere in that area? Let's split the middle and call it 32. No, Who's well, to I'll say just, we can't? I go with Ohio State covering. As I told you last week, I'm no longer picking scores because that's pretty, pretty, I don't know, goofy. It always has been goofy. But if I had to pick a score, It'd be something like Ohio State 48, Toledo 17. That sounds like a score prediction to me. Well, that's 31. That's right on the dot. Although, you know what? I'm Two. telling you what. I'm sold on this defense. It's given up one touchdown. You've had a few times where the other team's gotten down in the red zone, but they always bunch up and take care of business with the exception of, of one time. And that was sort of a fluky kind of 
uh, advance anyway by Notre Dame. So I'm gonna change my score to 48 to nine or 12. Okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna do a quick audible here because I had Toledo at nine. Uh, I will go 52 to six Ohio State. I don't think this game is going to be close. And I think that only because I don't think Toledo can block Ohio State. And if maybe they had their two offensive linemen together, they could try to block Ohio State. I, I don't see a, a reality in which Toledo can match up on the in the defensive front. That is not to say that Toledo is a bad football team. This is a good football team, maybe the best in the MAC. Um, and they have a really good defensive front for what it's worth. I think Ohio State might have trouble, a little bit of trouble uh, at times early on the ground when Toledo's still fresh and ready to roll. Um, but I don't think there will be any liftoff from the Rockets in this one at the end. I think Ohio State wins 52-6. to It doesn't give up another touchdown. Yeah. I mean, Ohio State had scored six touchdowns last week and kicked a field goal, and we were all asking questions about, well, why are you so inconsistent? Blah, 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 blah. I think, I think if the consistency is there on Saturday, just like you're, you're talking about, I can see it really taking off. And one reason I wanted to make that point was uh, this is a damn good football team. Yeah, and like, like you said, Tim, this is a really good team. That is not taking anything away from Toledo. I want to make that very clear. I like this Rockets team because I'm a guy who follows the MAC pretty pretty closely. I like this Rockets team. I like this Buckeyes team against this Rockets team a lot, a lot. So, uh, gentlemen, we will see you all in the horseshoe on Saturday night for Ohio State and Toledo, 7 p.m. Uh, on Fox. If you can't make it down to the stadium, can't find a ticket, that's Matt Parker, the recruiting guy and photographer who will be down on the field Saturday night. That's Tim May. I'm just Spencer Holbrook. Us two will be in the press box Saturday night. We will see you back in the horseshoe on Saturday night for Ohio State and Toledo.